Good afternoon, everybody. Phil Simons here with Columbia Grain and your Friday afternoon weekly grain market recap. Well, this week was fairly tame when we compare it to what we have seen earlier this year. Now on Monday, there were a few fireworks as there were some errant missiles that hit parts of Poland, driving the wheat futures up 30 cents on Monday. Now when the dust settled and we found out that these were actually set off in error, we did take all the gains away that we saw on Monday and actually closed the week a little bit lower in terms of future, overall futures prices. Other than that, quite honestly, the, the news wires were fairly tame this week and really didn't leave a whole heck of a lot out there. But I am going to share my screen with you so we can take a look at some of the data that we did see uh, this week. And we're going to navigate to our favorite website, ColumbiaGrain.com. And over on the upper right hand corner, we're going to navigate to, produ to the Producers Solutions tab. Again, this is where we're going to house all of the data in terms of, of market news. We can see um, there were a few things that actually did hit the markets. Uh, the weekly um, export sales numbers were out on Thursday. Uh, the wheat conditions and crop conditions were out on Monday. Uh, the winter wheat conditions that we saw come out on Monday uh, did show a slight increase from last week at 32% now, good to excellent. But again, still um, down significantly from where we were last year. And when we take a look at more of a longer history of a 10-year average, uh, the good to excellent rating for winter wheat is down significantly. Uh, the other thing, like we mentioned just a moment ago, was the export sales uh, number that came out on Thursday. And uh, if we just take a look at what the pace is has been, uh, we, did, we did see the pace actually increase a little bit this past week. Uh, right now, the USDA is, is estimating that the U.S. corn uh, sales will be 2.1 billion bushels. Uh, which means that we need to have 36.3 million bushels on average sold every week. Uh, now, this past week, we actually saw uh, corn uh, numbers come up a little bit at 46 million bushels, which was nice to see a slight uptick in overall corn sales. We take a look at the soybeans and the pace that, that's needed currently uh, to meet the 2.045 billion bushel uh, export estimate from the USDA. We're needing 17.2 million bushels uh, on average per week. Now this week, this past week was just a massive, massive sales week for soybeans as they came in at 111 million bushels. So again, just a big, big number uh, for soybeans this past week, which was fantastic to see. Uh, we take a look at the all wheat combined. Uh, we're seeing that we need to have 10.6 million bushels uh, average per week. And this past week, we did see sales of all wheat at 10.7 million bushels. So right on pace in terms of US exports for wheat. Uh, but if we take a look, if we dive in a little bit further into the wheat by class, uh, we can see here that winter wheat, uh, the needed per week is 3.1 million bushels uh, in terms of export sales. And this past week, we had 2.2 million bushels. Uh, turn the page over to spring wheat. We're needing 3 million bushels on a weekly basis. And we had 2.7 million bushels this past week. And if we take a look at white wheat, our needs per week are 2.1 and actually came in a little bit better than that at 4.9 million bushels as Chile was a noted buyer of some white wheat this past week here. So again, just pretty good um, overall export sales numbers, uh, but not enough to, to buoy uh, the markets on, on the week. But again, the, the news wires were fairly, fairly quiet this week. So I do want to take a look at just some continuous charts and what we have seen in terms of pricing and the importance of, again, uh, building your marketing plan, taking a look at 23, 24 uh, crop years and when it when is a good time to pu pull the trigger. Uh, so if we take a look at a continuous corn chart, uh, this is going to go back to 2009. And you can see that we have seen on continuous corn the high close to eight, eight and a half dollars. Uh, but we did see a lot of time being spent really from 2013, 2020, 2021 uh, in this range, right anywhere from $3.50 to $4.50. So today, Dees 22 corn closed at $6.67. And when we take a look at that and we compare it to where we have spent a lot of time, you know, looking forward out the curve to 23, 24 may not be a bad idea to take a look at where should we have some targets? Where should we look at starting to price some of our new crop and then our new new crop? Because again, when we take a look at what we have seen 
out of history, you know, we have seen a lot of time in this area and sometime really topping out at this $8.50. So when we look at 660 or anywhere over $6 on a futures uh, standpoint, may not be a bad idea to start to really sit down and take a look at some of those values. Same thing on wheat. If we take a look at a continuous Chicago wheat chart going back to 2009, you know, we can say that we've spent an awful lot of time really in this $5 to six and a half, seven dollar $7 range. Uh, we're really topping out right around $13.40. Uh, and today we actually closed at $8.03 in Chicago Dece 22. So in all intents and purposes, we have taken, you know, close to five to five and a half dollars out of the futures markets in Chicago. But again, it's time to sit down and take a look at the 23 and 24 crop to see when is an advantageous time to start to pull the trigger. And along with actually just building your marketing plan uh, so that you can have your orders out there and working. Uh, same thing on, on continuous beans, you know, going back to 2009, you can see that we spent a lot of time, you know, in this 950 to 1150 kind of range. Um, and today we can see that January beans actually closed at $14.28 with a high um, close to, closer to $18. So again, we have taken a lot of fuel uh, out of the fire here this year so far, you know, in terms of overall futures prices. But again, now is a good time to look at 23 and 24 crop uh, to again, just build out that marketing plan and get your orders out there working to take advantage of the prices and the swings that we have been seeing uh, really this year. These knee jerk reactions are providing us with, you know, really some, some great pricing opportunities. So be sure to get a hold of your local Columbia Grain Merchandiser, get your orders out there working. Um, take a look at some of the accumulator contracts as well. You know, again, just another way of doing a hedge to arrive contract, but getting yourself a little bit of a premium. So be sure to get a hold of your local Columbia Grain Merchandiser. Take a look at that program as well. Remember, if you can drink it, don't trade it. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll talk with you next week.